Welcome to Mind Your Mind. Mind Your Mind podcast is for busy people like you who want to enjoy life and free up their time and emotional space by learning valuable tools for self-care and mindfulness. Our weekly topics are filled with compelling discussions and practical solutions to increase your productivity and healthy living. I'm your host, Joseph Tropper, and I'm honored to have you here with me today. Hello, and welcome to episode 16, Four Self-Healing Lessons from Dr. Bernie Siegel. And the real question for today is, does mind and spirit matter? And I think that many of you are going to listen to this and really say, wow, this is amazing stuff. I always believe this, and I really appreciate you talking about this, in which case, that's great. Um, I think some of you might be more neutral, in which case I would encourage you just to listen with an open mind. And some of you might already have preconceived notions, and that's judgmental. What I mean to say is, just some of you might already have a decision that this is not an area of uh, mental health or well-being that you care for or agree with. And that's fine. Just skip this one and go to the next one if you're not liking what I'm saying. Um, But if you are open to listen, then I think that you might gain something. Uh, We all know that there is a mind and body connection, that the things that go on inside our mind and the things that are going on inside our environment impacts our body and does have an impact on us. And so if you're interested in hearing some self-healing lessons from Bernie Siegel, who is one of the world experts on this topic, then this podcast episode is for you. So let's get started. First of all, who is Dr. Bernie Siegel? And the truth is, he's a very humble man, about 84 years old currently, a retired medical surgeon, and he actually prefers to be called Bernie. And one of the reasons he says that in numerous books, which I'll quote later on, is because he doesn't like to hide behind his credentials and his doctorhood. He likes to be a normal person who can interact and connect with you. And he was born in Brooklyn, New York, and attended Colgate and Cornell University Medical College. He also did an internship at Yale New Haven Hospital, and he worked in the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. He retired from his practice as a assistant clinical professor of surgery at Yale and general pediatric surgeon in 1989, and what he's done since then is to talk to patients and caregivers about how your mental health and your mind and spirit could impact your physical recovery. In 1978, he originated what he called the Exceptional Cancer Patients, It's a a very famous group that he still runs, partially, um, which focuses on obviously helping clients with cancer um, overcome their challenges and get emotional support from one another. He does very original things like using drawings to express things and to uh, draw the cancer and to fight against the cancer, uh, interpretation of dreams in very psychodynamic and other fascinating ways, um, and talking about feelings. It's called ECAP. And it's based on what he calls carefrontation, a safe and loving therapeutic place where people could talk openly and uh, improve their personal lifestyle, which is an amazing thing. One of his most famous books is called Love, Medicine, and Miracles. And if you're interested and you like what he talks, what I talk about from him here, you might actually uh, enjoy reading some of his works. He's got a number of them as well. One of his big complaints he has about his himself and fellow doctors when he first started at least to supply to him, but then he made a change was... And this is the quote that I think uh, really will resonate with some of you. As doctors, we are not trained to communicate and understand the power of our words as they relate to a patient's ability and desire to survive. That's from Bernie Siegel. And what he found very interestingly is that a majority of medical school students who are asked to draw a picture of what they see themselves looking like in five to ten years down the line, they often draw a picture of themselves as a prestigious doctor in uniform, either hospital scrub or medical coat. And that is basically the extent of the picture. And if there's another human being in the picture, i.e. a patient, um, they're often doing some type of experiment or interacting with them uh, via a tool, like a stethoscope or taking their heart pressure or other things. And this is a very bad thing in Bernie Siegel's eyes because this puts distance between ourselves and doctors. Of course, the argument would be that, you know, we're, we're trained to be more medical and logical and to not engage with the patients. But what he argues is that that's a violation of the Hippocratic Oath. It's true that a doctor must have boundaries and be careful about not overexerting oneself and burning out. And this is a cornerstone of Bernie's own personal life, taking care of himself, using love and family and his own personal support as a place of growth. But that distance, that extra distance that some doctors think they must take to remain logical, it actually shows that they have more lawsuits, and it also gives very often more poor prognosis and more poor medical care in comparison to doctors who actually have a relationship with their clients. 
So here are four tips from him, which I think are really, really interesting. And you'll see what you think. Number one, our desire to live brings life. One of the first questions Bernie asks people when they join ECAP is, so do you want to live to 100? And it's just this exuberant, great perception of life. And this, obviously, we, there are biological things that stop some people from living to 100. And Bernie does not believe that people who have cancer but do die before 100 are bad people. Not at all. But that desire to live is what he is trying to bring out because sometimes that can make a difference. And Bernie reports in his own career, um, sadly and, and, and happily, that some clients come in and they say, I have a diagnosis and I know you're a surgeon and I plan on being dead soon. And very often that's what ends up happening. And some come in and say, I'm going to fight and I'm going to live as long as I can. And some of them surprise doctors. Many of them surprise doctors. So that's important. Number two, pay attention to dreams and art. Um, this is really important. The dreams that we have, um, we don't have to be, we don't have to read Freud's 1902 book, The Interpretation of Dreams, uh, which isn't very good, by the way, in my opinion. Um, there, I had to get a Freud uh, knock in today. Um, that's not the only way to interpret dreams. Interpretation of dreams means what do you learn from your dreams? What do you think is being expressed? And what does that mean for you? Um, and sometimes talking that over with someone can be very, very helpful. Looking at your artwork and just drawing what Bernie has, people draw things that inspire them in life. He has them draw sometimes their cancer or their illness or things that are bothering them in life. And sometimes he has them draw the antidote to that. Whether it's in the case of cancer, sometimes he has them draw their white blood cells and red blood cells and other things. But sometimes we could gain a lot of insight from expressing ourselves through art. Number three, love is healing. When we surround ourselves with loved ones, with the people that are most precious in our lives, of course, we all have our own personal struggles, and it's easy to be heartbroken by challenges that we all go through. But when we focus on the things that we do love, the things that we have passion for, whether it's projects, whether it's family members, whether it's friends or ideas, uh, things that make our life meaningful and colorful, this can really prolong a person's life, and it's so important. And the last one, which really ties into so much of Bernie's work, is number four, our inner strength and knowledge is vital. And this is where one of the research studies that Bernie quotes, which is really mind-boggling, is that there was one researcher that um, explored quite a large number of uh, patients when they were told side effects that they would have, either from chemotherapy or from other procedures or medications that the clients were taking for their severe illnesses, they often developed those side effects. But in one research paper, when the clients were not told of the side effects or were even lied to or told that not that many people have no side effects, um, whether that was the case or not is an ethical question, um, many times there were less side effects reported. And so sometimes when we tell clients that they're going to feel sick, they end up feeling sick. Sometimes uh, he has one case where uh, he was told, the client was accidentally told that by taking a certain medication that his hair would grow back. And the medication actually was one that had the opposite effect. It would normally bald people. And while they took this medication, their hair did grow back. So there's a lot of mind and body connection. Bernie talks about a time where he was operating on someone and the anesthesiologist and the nurses were monitoring this person with this life-threatening surgery illness that the surgery was trying to correct. The anesthesiologist and nurses told Bernie, we're not able to continue the surgery. We need to stop what we're doing right now. His heart rate is out of control. There's a big problem. So Bernie took the man's hand while he was under anesthesia and said to him, sir, I need you to lower your blood pressure to 85. And within two minutes, that's exactly what happened. And there are countless stories that Bernie brings down and that I've seen in my own practice where people who are under anesthesia or being operated on or where doctors made comments about the client in a negative way that really impacted them in a very, very deep way. And sometimes uh, just saying, oh, you look really ill or this is really terrible could be very discouraging to the client and ca can cause untold damage. So again, going back to that original quote with a new appreciation of Bernie's work, as doctors, we are not trained to communicate and understand the power of our words as they relate to a patient's ability and desire to survive. We need to feed into that. Whenever I work with my clients, I tell them, do you want to know when you're finished with therapy? Do you know, obviously, we have goals that we've set and we are looking forward to achieving those goals, but here's what it is. I believe in you right now, and I believe that you could accomplish the things that you want to accomplish, okay? When you believe in yourself more than I believe in you, then you know that you've completed the journey of therapy. Because when you can believe in yourself and advocate for yourself and work towards those goals, then you're really on, on your path. If you want to learn more about Bernie, you could check out his website, 
very easy. Just Google his name. Look up Love, Medicine, and Miracles. He has a number of books. Um, honestly, if you've read one, you've read them all, but some people just love him. And the fact that his books are not more popular than they are, meaning, in my opinion, they should be bestsellers. He should have sold millions of copies because this mind-body connection is something that revives us and keeps us alive and keeps us well. It's something that just tells us about how we often are looking for quick fixes in the medical community. And we all often just believe that, well, only medication can help. Experience has shown all of us in the field that the mind-body connection is real. And when a person takes care of their mental health and gets into a positive, loving mindset, there is so much health and healing that could take place in their life. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to mind your mind. For more practical ideas and to make sure you never miss an episode, visit us at mindyourmindonline.com.